My first question is, is always, um, my esteemed audience knows I never summarize uh, another author's book and I never summarize another author's background. So if you would give a esteemed audience an overview of your background. Yeah, so um, I'm an author and I'm a writer and I live in the Boston area and I was born in India. I immigrated to the U.S. as a baby. I grew up in Kentucky, not far from where you are are. And um, then uh, I moved to the Boston area for college and I've been here ever since. And um, I knew at a very young age that I wanted to go into medicine. So that's what I studied um, after college. And obviously I went to medical school and residency. And it wasn't until um, decades later that I decided to go back to writing. And I'm so glad that I did. So that, by that time, you'd already graduated from Harvard College, Harvard Medical School, uh, were, were already practicing medicine before you decided to, to start writing seriously? Yes, that's absolutely true. I, uh, I was practicing medicine for over a decade um, before I went back to writing uh, and started taking some writing classes. And I have to say that uh, this path, this kind of meandering path to writing has been a really good one for me. I feel like I rediscovered it at just the right time in my life. Um, my kids were a little bit older, they were in school. I was more established in my medical practice and uh, it was a good time to be creative again. And I have to share a story that I share with kids at school visits, which is that um, when I was in high school, I, I loved writing and I was in a creative writing class in high school. And I told my teacher, I said, uh, you know, Mr. Hertzfeld, I really love this, but I know I'm not going to write um, as my career. I know that I wanna go into medicine. And he said to me, who says you have to choose? And the next day he brought in all these books from the library that were by authors who happened to be doctors. And it totally planted a seed in my head. And that seed started to sprout uh, decades later. And so I'm very thankful that he uh, listened to me and uh, kind of helped me keep my mind open to the possibility of coming back to writing. And one last thing that I have to say about this story is that when I went back for a high school reunion, when I went back to Louisville to my school, I knew we had sold my first book and I knew it was coming the next year. And the first person I ran into, I literally got out of the Uber and at my school. And the first person I ran into was my old teacher who was, you know, retired, but he still came back for reunions and saw um, all the alumni. And I said to him, I said, oh my goodness, you're in my book. And he looked at me and he said, well, I hope I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> It was actually a line that he used uh, in our creative writing class that one of the characters in my book says. The line is, poets need time to stare out of windows. And even way back when he was trying to tell us that uh, that time when you seem to be doing nothing, when your mind is wandering, is not wasted time. That it's just really uh, important time. And of course, as soon as you um, saw your, your huge advance for your, your middle grade novels and your huge advances for your picture books, you thought, what if I, why did I ever waste time at, at Harvard uh, Medical School? This was, this was where I was at, right? <laughs> oh, yes, absolutely. Positively, yes, we all know that. The way to get rich is to be a writer for kids. <laughs> that's where all the money is i i assume that every author i've ever talked to on this show is, is all about the material wealth that this job provides <laughs> absolutely absolutely <laughs> so